Everybody, what is going on? Thursday night, Hello. time for our episode of Thrifty Business. Let me turn this on. I'm Jeremy. I forgot to put my lights on. Hi, I'm Jason. What's up? And joining me tonight is Angela. Hey, Jay. How's it going? What is happening, Angela? How are you? I'm good. Good. This, Very busy. This is a new backdrop for you. Isn't it cool? I like it. It was, you know, I could throw this up or I could clean it behind my desk. This is what I did. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. All right, let's get right to our first segment because then that always introduces our guest. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different mug, and I try to match up to our guest. Tonight, our guest has the most badass name ever, right? Rebel Hammond. Hello, Rebel. How are you? I'm doing great. What's going Hi, on Rebel. now? I'm going to... Here's how I'm matching up tonight. Where'd you grow up, Rebel? Germany. And then after that? Uh, All right, where were you stationed, maybe? Hawaii. There we go. I'm like, crap, did I misread it? <laughs> All right, so tonight we're going with Hawaiian rum. It's called Kaloa. It's really, really good, made in, made in Alana, Kauai. And then we uh, Rebel's famous for selling plush. So I looked really hard for a tiki mode that looks like plush. We didn't really find it, but Rebel, where do you live now? I live in... Greenville, Tennessee. All right, Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton's Dollywood. And I do happen to have one tiki mug with big boots. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Princess Pua. Oh, nice so, choice. I like it. So this, this would be my Dolly Parton tiki mug. So there we go. <laughs> what you drink it off tonight, Angela? I'm actually, I'm also going with the double theme. I'm having a Starbucks double shot. <laughs> <laughs> no time. We were on our way back. We made one quick stop at the gas station. <clears throat> and Rebel, what you got? Anything exciting? Well, I brought Dr. Enough, which is a regional favorite that's bottled in Johnson City, Tennessee. I have never even heard of that. Is I'm that intrigued. like a Mountain Dew? I'm intrigued. It is an energy drink, but it's vitamin enhanced. Okay. I want one. I want one. Let's get right? one. Very good. <laughs> Can you ship those? <laughs> They're glass. <laughs> those are. FOMO? Yeah. Stacy said FOMO. <laughs> All right, Rebel, if you click, uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit. If you click the uh, the camera and the mic up at the top there, and then we'll see you in about 25 minutes. Awesome. And then Angela and I are off and running for our first segment. Oh, my. There it is. <laughs> Time for our scores of the week. These are Yay. things you should be on the lookout for. These are bolos. When you're out thrifting, hunt for these things. Woo! is this that is a bank <clears throat> um sometimes they're referred to as leptons um then back in the day back in the 50s and 60s you would get like a little um like a six inch version of this from the bank when you open a christmas account and they call it the spaghetti santa because it's got that that um that kind of bristly like pottery porcelain it's like they cut off a, a spaghetti to to give it that fluffy look but it's all breakable um and this was actually the display that would have been in the bank and this one i took it to jenny's group i couldn't find it and this is where my worth point subscription paid for itself because there were none to be found i couldn't even find one on a google search but i found a few a couple that had sold a couple years ago um the highest price one had gone for 150 but ours had the original box Ooh. so so i shot it for I shot for 300 and it sold in the first 12 hours. That is awesome. And it's not Christmas time. No kidding. Yeah, I sold a Christmas CD. Okay, this is, okay, these little six inch or little four inch sailor hats. They're just like for like a crafter would use on a puppet. Like here's, here's like a <laughs> cowboy hat version. They're little. <clears throat> and we were at a sale and they had, um, if you remember when I bought all those huge rolls of faux fur, the lady was a puppet maker. So on this one shelf, there were some brown 
grocery bags like you would get at a store and we needed those. And the auctioneer said, how much for contents of the shelf? And we got it for a buck. But on this, um, on the shelf, there was a tote and it was full of these craft hats. And I probably have probably close to a thousand of Boy. different, I've got <laughs> sailor hats and cowboy hats and straw hats and blue straw hats and just tons of them. So I just threw them out there. They were easy listings. I put them out there in multiple quantities and they're selling for um, $15 a pop for a quantity of six. So by the time it's all said and done, that one tote that's not taking up hardly any space is going to net us a couple grand. And uh, Christine in the chat said, kitty hats. Kitty hats. <laughs> the cats would not stand for it. I tried. All right. And we know uh, vintage vintage office stuff, really anything vintage still in the original package always does well. Um, this is a vintage petite Rolodex. Some people are still using them. Um, this one, I had it listed for maybe a couple weeks, sold for $45. Nice. And I don't even know where it came from. It may have even been in the building when we moved in. When I clicked the link for this, I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Isn't she cute? Wow. All right. We did an, yeah, she is. We did an estate clear out a um, year and a half ago where they said you can have everything that's here if you take everything. So really our only investment in this stuff is our sweat equity. Um, but there was a whole tote of doll pieces and parts. Um, that doll had sold for $15 plus shipping and she was about maybe five inches. I don't know. That's probably there in the description. She's about five inches tall. Um, but I probably found 30 listings worth of stuff in that tote. So if everything's selling 15 to 25, I mean, I'm talking like decrepit arms and legs and, you know, just pieces and parts I'm selling and it really doesn't matter the condition. People will buy all kinds of everything. Oh, so that was 15 yeah. bucks. All right, I've, I, you know, I haven't shared a, a, a tiki mug sale in a while. I, I have them all the time, but I've seen yeah. that one. Yeah, this is proof you can uh, drink for free around the country. This mug with the drink was like I think sixty bucks, and mm -hmm. it was sold for one hundred eight dollars with the extra Beautiful. goodies that are just free at the bar, like napkins and swizzles and stuff. So, especially I, if you're there with Peggy. Yeah, my drink for free, swizzles. and then I got I got profit to drink. Nice, that's nice. Oh, hey, Angela, were your, were your uh, last three Etsy sales? Yes, those were all Etsy. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, Levi's 550 uh, jeans uh, sold for more, a little more than normal. And Jean, uh, Jean, Joy would, jeans with Joy would be happy <laughs> to see that. Uh, they, they went to um, England, uh, 36 uh, bucks, 28 in Great British Pounds. But yeah, they were nothing exciting. They were just a little bit older, made in the USA is in black. Uh, but they found a new home in the UK. So I was very excited about that. Good job. And I think I told, uh, we posted pictures a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago. Stacy and I went to the dollar sale at uh, Buffalo Exchange. That means these items had moved through Buffalo Exchange, which is a secondhand clothing store. No one ever wanted them on full price, on 25% off, on 50% off. This ended up in the dollar bin, sold for 30 bucks with shipping. So very nice. And when you do those dollar sales, you can't be picky because it's like a mad dash. It's like vultures to the prey. So you're just grabbing yeah. something that looks cool. And I did kind of glance over it as I was leaving to make sure I wasn't buying anything that was like, you know, full of holes and stains. But I didn't know Eloquai, the brand, but it was a new with tags dress size 24. Like who wouldn't pick that up for a dollar? It's a sharp looking dress. Yeah. Heck yeah. So that sold. And my last score today is uh, these stethoscopes. I should I shared them a long time ago. I bought like yeah. 80 of them at Savers. And I somehow still had one laying around. I thought I was done, threw it up, sold it real quick, and uh, had a funny question from the customer. Well, so what can you tell me about the uh, lifetime guarantee? I'm like, yeah, I'm not the company that made them. I'm just <laughs> Jason in the in Nevada selling them. You know, you want to check with them directly. All right, that's our regular scores of the week. Now it's time for my CD scores of the week. You're not flipping music yet. You have not. That means you've not taken my webinars and you are leaving <laughs> all kinds of awesome money on the table. Now, if you remember last week, my, uh, uh, was it a shipping tip or eBay tip where I had the same CD, uh, a CD by the same artist, two different CDs named the exact same thing. And I almost sent the wrong one. So that was my tip to pay attention when you're shipping. Well, guess what I sold? I sold the other one this nice. week. <laughs> Like how, I have a thousand CDs for sale. And the fact that I sold this one this week, so that is two sounds orchestral CDs in a two week, two in a week 
and one sold for uh, 60 and this one sold for 30. So if you've never heard of Sounds Orchestral, keep your eyes peeled for it. It's because you touched it. Oh, absolutely right. Now this one, uh, I have no clue who Jamie Owens Collins is, but when I go to this one specific store in LA, Stacy uh, works the uh, dollar bin, or actually technically the 99 cent bin, and she found this one, and look what it sold for, $40. So here's another place where I'm pulling stuff out of a dollar spot, 40 bucks. Lovely. And anyone know who Rat Dog is? Let's see in the chat. Don't say if you know, Angela. Let's of course see in the I know. Let's see in the chat who knows who Rat Dog is because I sold this Rat Dog CD for $70 this week. Now, if you have been watching my show for the past, let's say, year, I've been doing the CD solds and you haven't got into it yet, why not? It is such easy money, especially once you learn. Once you take my webinars, once you uh, spend some time paying attention to the to the CD and the cassette posts in the chat, uh, no, no. Oh, Tina's got a bunch of Red Dog CDs to put in her 10-pound challenge. Brother of Mouse Cat. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so Red Dog, because someone's really said it yet, Red Dog is an offshoot of, do you know, Angela? Rat? No. Do you know? Cat Dog. No, Grateful Dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Weir from the Grateful Dead. <laughs> 70 bucks. And that CD is not that old. So cool. keep your eyes peeled for CDs. There is crazy money to be made. I just showed you a hundred, uh, $140 in three CDs. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what does. All right, I'm excited. Not, not everything is winners, though. No. Sometimes we have duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. Now, you had oh. the didn't go so well. No, these aren't the good ones. These are the massive fit. They're not the ones that people are looking for. These were just, these are the lower end ones, but I got excited when I saw them. You know, I was on a little jeans buzz, you know, from watching the, the Secret Beach webinars. So um, this one, actually, this pair came in when I, remember when I bought that Biggie Levi's jacket? And the guy had a stack of made in the USA Levi's. Well, I got like so excited. I could, I was blinded. So, um, but those smelled really, really bad. So they had to like take a good long soak in the washing machine. And I pretty much trashed the, um, the black patch. You can, it doesn't oh, even say yeah. silver. I know. And I didn't even admit that for months, but I, this thing has been around forever. I tried running them at auction. I tried them high. I tried them low. I finally just threw everything back out there at $17.99. I was like, they're going to go or they're not. I figured I didn't have much in them, cost-wise. Whoa, I've never seen a uh, Silver Tab Massive before. <laughs> yeah, which to me sounds like the loose fit, which it's not. The The, the thighs were really wide. It yeah, was, it's really, it was, really big pant legs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a little big there. Whoops, there we go. Whoa, hello. If I've said it once, I've said it 5,000 times. I hate dishes, and I hate things that break. Um, we bought... <laughs> I do. I hate it. And that's primarily what my husband sells that I ship is breakable stuff. But um, this was, we just got a ton of them and it doesn't really look like a dud at 2384. Um, that was a quantity of eight. I've got these things marked at 399 and I actually had them on sale and I thought somebody had sent me an offer, but then they paid full price for eight of them. So I was like, well, okay, but I have more. I have so many more. I know it says that there's a limited quantity remaining. I have more that I still don't have listed. But we originally got them in a huge lot that had complete sets that hadn't been opened. So that's what I was going after was the stuff I didn't have to open and individually pack. <laughs> but now I've got like all these, I, I probably have 36 of the mugs that nobody wants. And so I'm just, I'm ready for them to be gone. There may be a, an accident on, on the shelf or something. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. All nice. right. Now, I'm always happy to share when uh, CDs are duds, too, because not everything is a winner. And That's a I CD. Fully, yeah. I fully believe you get uh, more education on your duds than your successes. I did list this. It was sealed. It's just a two-single uh, CD of 1999 Little Red Corvette. I did list this when Prince passed, and I forgot it was listed. And it, you know, it was worth way more back then for whatever reason. This didn't sell. It finally sold for $8. I paid for, so yeah, not a lot of. That's a bummer. Yeah, and this one, I thought this Kenworth trucking hat 
uh, you know, Hawaiian shirt looking hat would be awesome. I've had it for like almost three years. That's kind of a mashup that I, I just don't see truckers in Hawaiian. I don't There's see that. One trucker out there who was like, likes Hawaiian shirts. I don't know. Yeah, he bought but your look, hat. <laughs> if you're into Kenworth trucks and you're into Hawaiian shirts, I'll happily take $10 for this. <laughs> so, oh, it still hasn't sold. No, no, this is live. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just I want, I want it to go bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs> All right, speaking of going places. <laughs> Where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a capital with a B. B potential customers. And I love that you, who drew this like, like a uh, uh, drunk arrow? Not me. Oh, so that was Debbie. That was Debbie. <laughs> I'll just Sorry, show Debbie. her how to draw a straight arrow. Oh my God, this is rough. <laughs> it does look like some of my work though. <laughs> I can see where you'd be confused. All right, this vintage creepy doll. She only sold for $23, but it was $59 with shipping, and she went to Dubai. Dubai needs creepy dolls, too. Hell, yeah. Apparently. And <laughs> they paid, yeah, they paid way more in shipping than they did for the doll. Oh, she was great. She came out of that same tote where I've been selling the pieces and parts of dolls. She was in the same one. Was and I mean, she hurt. Like 17 feet wide or what? <laughs> Do what? Was that tote like 17 feet long? No, it was only like maybe, I don't know, just the regular like 18 inch deep by 24 or 30 inches wide, whatever. Yeah. But you can pack a lot of doll parts in there. <laughs> That's true. All right. So last week I shared records going to uh, Greece. I think this week, uh, someone in Picardy, France needed four pounds of Rick Derringer records. So again, if you are not listening internationally, ugly dolls, Rick Derringer records, you never <laughs> know what someone around the world needs and needs now and will pay right now. big money for. All right. <laughs> now it's time for you have got to be shipping me. Little tips and tricks, what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. Oh, my shipping tip goes right along with what you were just saying. You never know who is going to need what you have and they need it right now. I sold this vintage, it's a hanging, um, like a hanging closet. It's a vinyl, it folds down flat. It was a thing back in the 50s and 60s. They still make them. Um, but this was like a new one with the original package and it only sold for $25. And I couldn't understand when I looked at my, my phone and it said I had almost $100 come in. And I was like, they must have had something else on their order. And I looked down, I'm like, oh, holy crap. They want it not only international, they want it International Express. So Dang. it's important to have those boxes. They paid $72.66. And guess where it went? Dubai. It went to, it went, no, it went to the Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers Studios in France. Get out. That's you get out. And you know what they make there? You know what they film there? Two cool things. Harry, the Harry Potter, Harry Potter movies and the new Wonder Woman. So Ooh. now I'm thinking, ooh, it was gold. Maybe it's going to be Wonder in Wonder Woman's closet. Can you imagine if you're thinking of the Wonder Woman? Because, because you will never you shut me up. National shipping. That's why. Exactly. And if that if it shows up in that movie, you will never shut me up. Oh, we're going to have a party. All right. <laughs> this is not normal. I've been shipping uh, online for 19 years. This boo boo is my boo boo. Oh, so I sold this uh, Star Wars ornament. I actually shared it as a score a couple of weeks ago, and this is how it arrived to the customer. What I screwed up and forgot to do was to add some tissue paper on the inside, kind of around the characters. Mm. It still might have broke, but I didn't put anything inside the box, so it was able to freely just bounce around inside, yeah. and you can see how it showed up. So when you have things like little figurines and stuff, get some of that eBay tissue paper and get it in there just so things are kind of solid. It doesn't have to be like a rock solid, but just so it's solid. And so I felt so bad. I, I refunded it and they they were so nice. They're like, um, I'll ship it back to you if you want or I'll, I'll keep it. I, I'll try and glue it. And I'm like, oh yeah, please keep it. <laughs> so was it a big loss for you? 35 bucks, so it sucked, yeah. you know, but, but you, you know, you want to keep customers happy. Hey, Angela, what is yeah. the best e-commerce event in the Midwest? Ecom Chicago. You got it. That's it's right. Coming up October 16th through 18th. If you haven't signed up yet, get signed up. It's my favorite event of the year. Uh, it is three days in Chicago. Uh, EcomChicago.com. Chicago. 
to where the place to find it. But the cool thing, and they added this last year, and I love that we're doing it again this year, is it used to be a two-day event. They added a third day to put um, the vendors who, uh, you know, kind of get the event going, the, given the, the vendors a chance to demonstrate their product. So if you want to see how, like, say, I, I should probably learn who the vendors are, but like, say, Inkfrog was there, they would demonstrate Inkfrog for a day. People like that. But then they had a great idea to take all the people who come and speak, like me and Chris Green and John Lawson, and do a coach's day where you can sign up for 20-minute sessions with us, and Chris will help you with your merch T-shirts, and I'll help you with your eBay store. And uh, it was so much fun. So it's, you get eight hours of all these coaches and and the and the uh, the vendors showing their wares. I mean, that's just one day, and there's three days of cool shit. So. If oh yeah, Midwest, come on over. We always have a great time, and it's just a fun. It's a fun like family event too. You know, it's got that feel like we're all in. It does. Family. It's nice and cozy, and everybody's in the same hotel, and the pizza place is real close, and everybody knows where the closest thrift store is, so you have to plan one a little farther out. <laughs> you are true. Yeah. Now speaking of uh, shipping too, I do do tiki mug unboxing videos, and if you're not if you're not on the tiki mugs, you would think, "Wow, would I want to watch that?" Jay. Well, I buy a lot of mugs. A lot. A lot. Yeah. And they're all breakables. And it is amazing what some people think is acceptable shipping uh, practices. So yeah, tune in. They're usually just two, three-minute videos, uh, two to three minutes long. And it shows you how people ship different breakables. So it kind of gives you an idea because uh, I'm also narrating as I'm going. So if it's good, I'll let you know. If it's horrible, I'll let you know too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now it's time for our thrifty tip of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're out. Thorsten. Oh, okay. I, um, you know, I know we've talked about using the, the apps, the offer up and let go and whatnot for searching uh, to source. And I was getting so annoyed the other day when I was searching for something and I keep seeing all the ones that were, so, I mean, obviously I don't live in a big, highly populated area. The majority of what I was seeing, everything was out of state, out of, you know, had to be shipped. And I'd already like shrunk down my, my radius and everything to like five miles. And I was still seeing nothing but shippings up at the top. There's a simple little filter. Just click on pickup only <laughs> and all the other ones disappear. You'll still see the sponsored ads, but it's not nearly as, it's not as overwhelming to try to find something near you. And that's all I got. That's a perfect tip. Now I've shared this tip before. I'm going to share it for, uh, from a different, little bit of a different angle. I always tell you hit the just out cart. Now, the one thing I've never said is the, the just out cart, there's a bunch of different ones because they're they're different for different sections and there's racks of women's clothes, racks of men's clothes. So it's not just one thing. Make sure anytime something with wheels comes out of the back room, you run there. <laughs> so Angela, what do you see on this car that you should probably grab? Um, You know, I didn't wear my glasses. I see a big hug mug. That's what I grabbed. Now the big hug okay. mug is not what it used to be, but it's still selling for 15 bucks and it was 69 cents. And I heard the wheel squeaking and I looked down the aisle <laughs> And I saw that big hug mug and I went and grabbed it. Like, a, you know, it used to be a $50 mug, but still I will spend 69 cents to turn it into 15 bucks plus shipping. Heck yep. yes. All right. Now it's time for. Our eBay tip of the week, little tips and tricks to help you out when you're selling online. Okay. Mine is coming right from the eBay shipping page. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, it's going to say, what does it say, Jay? Display a display oh, postage God. value on label. You can either display your postage value or you can enter text. Now, a lot of times, if especially if you're selling vintage denim, chances are it's going overseas and chances are it's going to what we call a drop shipper or someone who is buying a whole bunch of stuff up and they're going to export it all at the same time in a sea can. So um, when they buy it, they'll send you a message that says, hey, can you put the transaction ID number on it? That's a lot of digits. And I'm always afraid if I'm copying it down by hand, I'm going to screw it up. And the last thing you want is an unhappy customer, even though they'll probably figure it out, they just got to open the box. But if I can make it easier for my customer, I'm going to do that. So I clicked on it the other day. I didn't even have to fill it out. As soon as you click on it, it auto fills the transaction number. Get out. Get out. And it's not very big. I brought it right here. Oh, hang on, hang, really, on, hang on, hang on. Okay. There, there you go. Oh yeah. It's really tiny, <laughs> but, um, but you can circle it, you know, and they'll know to look there and they'll, you know, I figure I've done my job at that point. That's a great tip. I have yeah. never, ever even seen that before. You know, and it I, might I be new. Business. I learn new shit every week. See, and it, it may be something new. I'd never seen it. Yeah, it could be, you know. But I haven't been around for 20 years either. 
All right, here's my here's my tip. And this is if you use a third party lister. So I use Ingfrog. There's also Octiva and I think six bit still around. But I sent all my things to launch and then I didn't double check them. And so like two weeks later, I'm in Ingfrog doing stuff and I realized a couple failed to launch. Now I've already put them away on the shelves like they're live. Didn't even notice they weren't live. And so my tip is, oops, let me back it up here. Uh, make sure that when you launch things, they actually launch. Because if you're listing directly on eBay and you're doing one at a time, it's pretty apparent if it did or if it didn't. If you're launching 50 things on Inkfrog at one time and you didn't you know, put eyes on it, 48 listed and two failed. Sometimes they fail because I made a mistake that isn't allowed. And sometimes it's just a hiccup in the system. So make sure you're always double checking and not two weeks later. Good call. All right. Oh, you know what? Oh, oh we'll do yeah, we'll do this one. <laughs> <Yoo -hoo>! <laughs> <laughs> is if it you me? Don't know who Joy Williams is. She's one of the admins in the Thrifty Board, and she has her own <laughs> awesome Facebook group called Jeans with Joy. And each week she profiles a member of the Thrifty Board who did a good job on kicking ass in denim. And this week it was Linda. Oh, geez. Sacchini? Linda Rowe Gardner Sacchini. Uh, she found these Levi's in the trash. So the estate sale was wrapping up and they were throwing things away. She's like, can I look? And they're like, sure. And she found these jeans. She gave them a dollar for them. And they were early 1970s selvage jeans that she sold within five hours for 170 bucks. Wow. You know what that is? That is genius. And if you sign up for Jeans with Joy, you could be a genius too. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. But yes, you know, we, great. we preach what we know and what we love. CDs are great. So are jeans. Crazy money. Ooh, listen to it. This is not a paid endorsement. Oh, it stopped so quick. You have a little uh, cuckoo clock going there. Oh, shoot. Yeah, it did. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a it. fun show next week. The producer of my TV show, Thrift Hunters, Kara Volchoff, is coming on. Oh, sweet. I was, I was looking for a good time to have her on, and, and next week is going to be a perfect time. And uh, she goes, so what do, you, what do you want me to talk about? I go, eh, let's talk about the show, you know, say a couple of nice things and then, uh, you know, make fun of me. And she said, so basically like normal? I said, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so you will hear, I'm wait. sure she'll be sharing stories of when I was messing up the, the uh, show and stuff. Uh, and so if you ever had any questions about behind the scenes from Thrift Hunters, bring it next week. So I have a question. When you were doing the show, did you wear a mic or did they have to have somebody extra tall to hold the boom mic for you? Yeah. So we wore mics. And then when we were with, you know, in the stores talking to like the clerk or whatever, there was a boom mic above us also. Oh, wow. My arms yeah. would have been tired. You're tall. Yeah. Yeah. We were both tall. And our, and our, and our sound guy was like five, seven. <laughs> so yes. He was very much like up and over. <laughs> All right, coming up, eBay Open, a little over a month from now. Here is the schedule of events. If you're in town on Sunday, we're drinking ash juice at the Double Down. Monday is the Secret Beach Bash. If you haven't signed up yet, if you're coming, I've got the sign up in the Secret Beach right now. Tiki Party for, uh, Tuesday night at Frankie's. Wear your best Hawaiian shirt or Moo Moo. And then Friday is our big thrift class on steroids with me teaching, Joy teaching, Craig Dawson teaching the wall of baggies, Debbie's teaching books. My mom's teaching, and we're going to have a guest little five-minute speech from. So that's the right, right, right there. Heck, yeah. Right there. So uh, usually pinned to the top of the thrifty board is this graphic. So get signed up. If you've got any questions, I am happy to answer them. And uh, another thing that's open is the Seeker Beach. Just opened it this week for a little bit. And if you don't know, the Seeker Beach is an offshoot of the thrifting board. It's a smaller group. It's a more intimate group. And each month I do a webinar. Each month I have a guest do a webinar. We have contests. We go on cruises. We have parties at bars we take over. So all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, this is all the um, guest webinars we've had to date. So if you sign up today, everything we've had to date is still there for you to look at a great one on vintage Xmas ornaments by Ginny, who's in the chat right now. Uh, John, our boy, our buddy, John Popeye's postcards did two postcard ones. Nadine did a three part women's shoes. One joy did a two part Levi's ones. Uh, intro. I to did Lego. one. What, which one's yours? I forget. Mine's uh, the naughty stuff. Oh yeah. The weird, the odd and naughty. Duh. How can I forget <laughs> that one? 
So that's all our guest webinars. And here's mine. Um, and we do we do more than just teach you stuff. So I do teach you stuff. I teach you about uh, flipping uh, t-shirts. I teach you about the wonderful world of plush, which we're about to hear. But I also teach you how to have a successful garage sale, how to thrift using the local apps, embracing all the priority boxes and envelopes. So it's a full, making you a more well-rounded seller. So if that interests you at any point, uh, head over to the secretbeach.club or just drop me a message uh, after the show and I will be happy to point you in the right direction. All right, let's get our guest in here. Let me stop sharing that. Hey Rebel, uh, flip your stuff on please. I really liked when I could- There she show. is. Hey Rebel. Right. Hey. Get, hang on, let me get this up here. Let's get, come on. Wing. All right, and then, then we do the little this and then we do the little, uh, oops, not chainsaw. Hey, everybody, it's Rebel. How the heck are you, Rebel? I'm doing good. <laughs> What's Nervous going on now, Rebel? Seems like you're a huge fan of Superman. No, this is my son's room who has the better mic, he says. <laughs> we were at the practice the other day. She's like, yep, my son says his mic is better. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that is awesome. All right, so you, you've you been all over the place. So when I say all over the place, you are an army brat. And yes. that you yourself were in the service. So why don't you tell us just a quick, everywhere you've been. I mostly grew up in Germany. We went there three times. I graduated high school there. Right after high school, I joined the Navy. Um, did a Westpac. So I got to hit Singapore, um, Thailand, the Philippines. Uh, and then once I left the ship, I had the hard duty of going to Hawaii for about 10 oh, years. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got out at 13 years and uh, went to school to be a teacher and then moved home. And this what did you home. teach? I taught special ed. Oh, nice. Yes. Well, first off, let's, let's pause and say th uh, thank you for your service. Thank you. And, and good job on being a teacher, Absolutely. especially a special ed teacher. That's awesome. Yep. Thank yeah. Thank you. But then you had enough of all that. You're like, that's it. That's something I've had enough. So, you know, we're here because we're, we're talking to people who sell online. When when did you start? I mean, when did you discover eBay? So where were you in your life or, you know, when you're like, oh, what's this eBay thing? I had just moved back to Tennessee and was watching the Rosie O'Donnell show. And she mentioned eBay and I went looking for it. And then I started just kind of dabbling in it for several years and then just kind of took it full time later. All right, Angela, I've done, uh, seven, this is my seventh season, 25 shows a season. This is the first guest who's ever said, oh, Rosie O'Donnell led me to eBay. <laughs> that is awesome. So what year was that, give or take, about? 99. Oh, so like fresh eBay, like- Yes, eBay, very a little fresh. Baby, little baby. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Of all the answers, I didn't expect to hear Rosie O'Donnell. We should take a poll and find out how did everybody hear about eBay because I can't remember. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a fun one. So you were on from the beginning then. So when did you when did you think or decide that it should be full-time gig instead of just like, you know, because I did the same. Like I had jobs, but I discovered selling too. And I'm like, oh, that's fun, extra money. I, it was, my boys were little. So like 2001, I started like thinking, you know, I can go to yard sales and pick up toys because we buy toys anyway, because I had three little ones. And that's how I just kind of started dabbling. And back then it was still auctions mostly. And then in 2007, I decided to just really make it a full-time venture for myself. So Angela, Angela, when did you get on eBay? Uh, two years ago. Okay, so you're too new. So yeah, do you, do you remember well, seven, what but... you brought by it now? We're all like, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember those days because we were everyone was like, uh, like what? This is this is not auctions. What are we doing? And now yeah. I wouldn't even I would hardly ever do auctions anymore. You know, it's, it's amazing how it changes over the years. I still do them once in a while. The doll, so. Yeah, we're definitely talking about the doll. So, so uh, were, go, go ahead, Angela. Were, were you in, like, before the pictures were a thing? When did that happen? 
like the photos because everyone talks about how much work it is and how labor intensive it is now, which it's not. I can't imagine doing it the old school way like you guys did, where you had to like wait for the checks and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I it what I wasn't doing it very much back then, so it wasn't as big of an issue. But okay. I remember I had like one picture, maybe two pictures. That okay. was all you had to have on there to and everything sold. <laughs> yes. Wow. Everything sold. So so you said three kids back then, but you have a few more nowadays. How many kids do you have? Well, I have two adult sons from my time in Hawaii. I was married to somebody in Hawaii and I have two adult sons. They're 34 and or almost 34 and 32 or something. And then then I came back to Tennessee after we divorced and I have I had three more boys and it's like my family wow. number two because they're still teenagers and so, and this made you nervous. The show you've you've raised five boys. You're fine. five boys. <laughs> five boys, <laughs> and I have a stepson. He's eleven. Oh my gosh! So six boys. Six boys. Wow! So it's, a, it's a Brady bunch without girls. <laughs> no girls. I have a granddaughter. Yay! All. Yeah. All right. So we talked about we, we kind of we 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 told we uh, promoted the show uh, as a family business. So. Uh, well, actually, let's start with how many listings you have on eBay right now, because this will blow people's minds. It's almost fifty-two hundred right now. Oh, where's my where's my applause? There we go. <laughs> and and you don't you also do FBA? We do groceries. This is crazy. So how how much do you have going wow. into FBA at any given week? We were doing much more last year, and. Then, you know, we had our situation and we kind of backed off and it's still kind of not where it was from back then. It's just kind of, you know, we work on it, but not to the extent that we did back last year. We're Do you have plans to build again. it back up? Yeah. Yeah. It takes a while. And, you know, it's just Amazon's a totally different cup of tea. It's a different, yeah. I, I much prefer eBay. And did you always do fulfilled by Amazon or we did you keep any out, of it? It was funny. Four years ago, I started seeing in these different groups, people talking about Amazon. So I told my husband at that point, we were both staying home. We homeschool our kids too. So I, I was like, go look and figure out what this Amazon thing is. <laughs> right. I pretty much help shop and I help, uh, do the computer stuff when we're getting ready to do shipments, but that's his thing. And that's where the kids mostly help us is with the Amazon prepping and shipping stuff. So does your husband have a real job or is he just solely working with you? Well, we, well, we got married in 2012 and that next year we both decided I had actually gone back to work for the state and he was an IT manager and we decided we were going to let eBay be our thing. And we both were going to stay home, grow the business, and uh, homeschool the three. So, and you have your own personal did. IT department. What could be better? I know <laughs> he takes care of all of my issues. Oh, can I send my mom over to you? For oh, a while? <laughs> oh, you you wouldn't believe the eye rolls I get from him on a I daily would. basis. I I can I feel your pain. That would be yeah, <laughs> my husband too. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right. So it truly is, you know, a family business. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Angela's got a family business going on there with her husband. And, and the cats. Wife, and my what? And the what? And the cats. And the cats. They have <laughs> a role. My, my wife uh, has a whole different career, but she's gotten really good at thrifting and sourcing. And she enjoys, uh, oh, I just got paid for jeans. Yay. She enjoys spending the time <laughs> with me in the store. So I really love every one of us that has a family type business, whether it be just your spouse or your spouse and kids, or, you know, if I could get a to do anything but sleep in my feet, I'd put him to work too, but <laughs> he guards the inventory, uh, occasionally pees on it. So, <laughs> so you, you kind of uh, teased it, alluded to it. Uh, let's talk about uh, one of your uh, six boys, Lance, who's got an awesome Metallica shirt on right here. He does. Last year, Lance, um, graduated from high school on May 18th. And 
he and his cousin, my sister Regina and I, they, the, our kids are the same age. Lance and Emma were the same age. And Emma came to his graduation and he was going to go to her graduation the next morning. I left early to go yard selling. Uh, my biggest regret of that day for sure. Um, because uh, he was going to meet me where her graduation was. About 30 seconds after he left our house, his tire blew. He hit a, he went through a pasture, hit an embankment, and it catapulted him into trees. Oh. And oh he God. was driving a Jeep Wrangler. And the roll bar came down and hit him in the head. Oh, the roll bar. Sure yeah. Oh, wow. So he, uh, I had sent him a text at 1145. He was supposed to meet me. And I'm, I was like, where are you? And I did not know at that point he was actually surrounded by first responders trying to save his life and get him on the air flight to the trauma center. Oh my gosh. So uh, life, life wow. goes along and things are going all right. And then this happens. And, and I mean, of course, every parent's uh, worst saying. nightmare. I mean, luckily my mom only had to pick me up for being arrested twice. So luckily that uh, she never had to go through that. But what, what, and as I was kind of teasing, uh, teasing this earlier in the little preview, you know, it's your own business. So when you got to stop and take care of one of your children, how does the business keep going? Because you can't, I mean, it, it would just stop otherwise. So did, did the rest of the kids, did, the, did your husband pick up the slack? I mean, because obviously you got to take care of your baby. Yeah. You know, it, it was just kind of some good luck because... The year before, my business, my my stuff had gotten so big that I decided to uh, set up an inventory system, and everything was inventoried, and the bins were put in the custom label number. So, the day of the accident, I mean, my husband brought me a bag because he knew I was not leaving. Brought me a bag to the hospital, and we were there for 19 days. And he and my 16 year old son were able to figure out the inventory system figure out how to ship and they just kept it going the entire time I was gone. Well, good for them. Good for you. Yeah. That's family, you know? Yeah. That's family. That's they do. The biggest question everyone has right now is how is Lance doing? Lance is doing wonderful. He yeah. actually, uh, he's my walking miracle. Oh Everything yeah. That positively could have happened for him did. He actually just, May was his one year, and uh, he was released from all of his doctor's care. Oh, and good he, for him. And you. Good. Yeah. He actually is uh, just started working on it through a temp agency, and he just started driving last week, which he says is kind of scary. But uh, How do you feel about that? <sighs> it's hard. I was it was hard, but then, you know, at the same time, my 16 year old had just started driving when all of this happened. And now my other son that's sitting over here, he's getting ready to get his permit in November. So, you know, you just got to go with it. Just oh, go. All the teenage boys with driver's license, luck out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're going to need a second eBay store to pay for that insurance. Yeah, That is no lie. Oh my gosh. Imagine how much they eat. Yes. Oh my God. That, <laughs> that thought just hit me. Oh my God. All those teenagers. So since uh, you said you do groceries on the FBA, do you ever go to ship some stuff and you go, Hey, where'd all these pork rinds go? And there's some teenager <laughs> running away. Going, I don't know. mom. <laughs> yeah. You should see my kitchen in my living room. It's our Amazon rejects and our Amazon returns and our Amazon expired. And <laughs> there's just snacks everywhere. It yeah. go you eat from the expired pile boys. That's it. <laughs> They're fine with that. They don't the care. Stuff is for other people. <laughs> they don't care at all. So does Lance remember the accident? Or is it, Not you know, at all. Yeah, most people don't when they have something. He doesn't bad. even remember graduation the night before. Wow. I think what he remembers is what people have told him in the videos he's seen. So, but I mean, his mind, his memory, everything is good. You know, I had him yeah. tested and everything. The, this neuropsychologist told me the worst thing about Lance right now is he's an 18 year old male. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so if, if everything's going good for him now, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in the body will protect itself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to remember that, you yep. know, 
and you know the graduation that's just a little a little a, a small price to pay for for not reliving that every day yeah his, so that's his, awesome yeah his only thing was he had joined the marines already he was pre-enlisted oh. and there was no plan b so we're just kind of winging it still to figure out what he's gonna do oh well i didn't decide till i was like 45 to to what I wanted to be when I grew up. So he's got time. Yeah. We're all good. Oh, yeah. so he's got plenty of time. time too. <laughs> <laughs> Late bloomers. So um when when you were spending those 19 days in the hospital and and hubby and the one son were taking care of the shipping, was anyone listing or were they just taking care of shipping at that point? They were surviving with just the shipping. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of don't feel like letting that go yet yeah, i keep I, telling my husband i'm gonna keep question. yeah i would keep telling my husband why don't you you i'll teach you how to do the pictures you can come down and take pictures that's <laughs> about as far as i want to let him go with it right now all right so we have pictures of of your uh your filing here so if you click yeah. on the little picture that you see there of your basket you can see it bigger so yeah. is is this your uh, so of your five fifty two hundred items how many are plush 3,600. What? what? <laughs> sorry. <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So you have them in uh, laundry baskets? Laundry baskets and totes. It started totes, but I prefer the laundry baskets. So that's the way I'm moving. And I'm, when I first started, everything was by theme. That's how I kept up with it. You know, bears were in one place and character toys were in one place and and that's kind of what I left the remnants down there. That's how I used to keep everything, but I keep it that way still. I still try to stick with my my themes just as a backup. So if something gets lost and it was a character toy and it's not in the bin it should be in, it's probably in the next bin over it. So I'm trying to wrap my head around that. Well, here's a better picture, and I'm guessing that. Uh, so you and your husband and kids that are driving, I'm guessing, and this looks like the garage. I'm guessing no cars are ever parked in the garage. When we bought this house, I live on four acres. So when we bought this house, we built a 30 by 50 building. Um, I don't know what we were going to do with it. It was more <laughs> for storage. And my husband wants to do a workshop at some point when we retire. But that part right there is 20 by 30. And we are currently... Uh, insulating it. I put in commercial air. All of that was in my basement, but now my basement's been turned into the Amazon area. And so we moved all my stuff out to the building. So there's 28 shelves in there. You can't see them all, but there's 28 shelves and all of it's organized and that's pretty fantastic actually. And, and so the big question is why plush? You know, I didn't start out there, but I started watching a lot of these Facebook groups that, you know, the lost loveys and the, the people trying to find toys from their past. And, you know, I used to be very specific on which brands I would buy and which brands I weren't wouldn't buy. But now I buy pretty much anything. And just today I'm going through one of those groups and somebody was looking for a a specific plush from their past and uh somebody i actually had it and somebody had put oh. Oh. my listing in that so yay you know now, are you finding all that locally or are you sourcing outside of your local area i live in a very rural town but we have larger towns around us so um on the weekends i I'll, fridays i I'll usually do yard sales in my area. And then Saturday, I meet up with my sister who also eBays and who's watching oh, tonight. Look at that. Even more. My sister. Yeah. And uh, then we go out to the other towns and where she lives. But, and then I have a wonderful Goodwill outlet that I like to go to. And now, that's are you, where I get a ton of plush. Are yours primarily thrifted? Or do you ever go out and do retail arbitrage and like wipe out the clearance section? Very seldom. This really? is all used. Yeah. Dang. Dang. Life is cheap. I get it for a quarter, 50 cents a dollar. True. And you know, this, this, just this month, I have sold two specifically that were over a hundred dollars and I've kept a tally for this week, this month so far, I've already sold 
90 some plush this month. Wow. Wow. And they're All easy. Right. You throw them, you know, throw them in a bag and stick them in a poly mailer and just send them on their way. All right, I think you have sent us how you keep track of everything. So this is a little example of your spreadsheet here. So is this a spreadsheet that you created? I did. This, this is how I do a lot. I mean, there's there's some days I try to do 20 or more listings a day. Um, but there's days that I'll do 50 and 60 and 70 listings. What's PW what mean? Got. Playware. Those oh, are my little, okay. my, my clues. But what I do is I have everything usually at my feet that I'm going to list mm -hmm. and I pick it up. I put it in the cube. I take my pictures, um, you know, front, side, back, bottom, tag. And then the last picture is usually with the tape measure. And then I go to my spreadsheet. I write my title. I write my description. And then I don't know if you guys noticed in the pictures, everything I have is in a bag, in a clear bag. Um, so that keeps it clean. It keeps it organized. Oh, yeah. It keeps bugs away. It keeps smells away. Um, right now we're renovating that room. So it's keeping dust away. Um, and so I bag it, I weigh it, and then I just throw it. And I just do that over and over and over again until I've done everything that I plan on doing. And then I, my list of stuff that I've done and I take it out to my building and I get the bin locations for, I put everything where it belongs, write the bin locations. And then every morning I wake up before everybody else in this household. And I, uh, I list, I list it all at one time, one after another while I'm drinking my coffee. You as yeah, so dedication and, and, and that's awesome. You've got your, your system and I absolutely love it. Uh, you did send this picture. What's this picture for this creepy little doll? That was one of What's my your first turn? estate sales that made me fall in love with estate sales. My ah. poor dad wanted to go to an estate sale and I didn't want to go and I didn't want to go. And I finally I went and I didn't even know who she was, but I picked her up because she was gorgeous. I know who she weird. is. Yeah. And she I auctioned her and I, I, I had the estate sale bug after her. So who is she? You oh, yeah, she's a Blythe doll from the okay. '70s. Because <laughs> you're you're like, oh, well. you're like I know. Oh, it, that if that's not on your bow, if it's not on your radar. Yeah, I until this moment never heard of Blythe doll. So you know, she's kind of freaky though because there's a string in the back of her head, and when you yeah. pull the string, her eyeballs move and they, they change really colors. Move. Yes. Oh, I want. Yes. One. Right. I want one. But then I realized how much money they're worth. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I will have pictures of the I don't care. As long as the her, le her legs were actually broken. They're supposed to click, click, click like the old Barbies. But her legs were broken. But when I auctioned her, she sold for five hundred and eighteen dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. oh, my, my speaker turned off. Five hundred fifteen dollars. So yeah. uh, the big question on everyone's mind is do you, uh, two questions. Do you wash your plush? If they're dirty, yes, I wash them and I use a vinegar rinse to get out any winky smells. And then I set them on my couch for two days to air dry. So you don't um, have dogs. I do not have pets. Well, we have outdoor cats. <laughs> oh, a chew toy. Yay. <laughs> yeah, no. But any single time, anytime you walk into my house, you can't sit on a couch because it's usually covered <laughs> in toys that are drying. <laughs> And starting Monday with a new dimensional pricing, are you worried about your big plush? You know what? I went out there today and made sure that everything, if it's big, it's already boxed pretty much because I want to know exactly what the dimensions are. And luckily, I'm smart enough that I have been always putting, if it doesn't fit in a large priority box, I have automatically been putting uh, the dimensions in my listings. All right. So I went in today, though, I have about 20 or 25 that are boxed and made sure I added UPS ground because we have UPS daily pickup anyway for the Amazon business. Um, and daggone it, if four of them weren't even listed. So I need to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good catch, though. Yeah, they they've been dropped. And just so you know, Jason, I went to Worth Point today. The highest price Blythe doll that ever sold 
thirteen thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I gotta find one of these now. I like when I, yeah. I like when I learn new stuff from guests on the show. I'm like, oh, I gotta go find one now. Yay! There. All right, so let's talk because we want to end on your awesome story here. So let's talk about your scores and duds. We'll start with your duds first. Yeah, Will and Cake Pans just don't don't cut it no more. No, it was an emotional thing. My mom died 10 years ago and she loved Wilton. So I bought a bunch and that was my <laughs> last resort, 99 cent auctions. And that's what it went for. Dang, I, I thought you were going to say your mom loved the fairly odd parents. I'd be like, what? <laughs> no, no. So you had that and you had this uh, Build-A-Bear, not so much, nine bucks. Whee! Yeah, Build-A-Bears. You know, there's a few Pokemon maybe, but for the most part, I'm just trying to get rid of them too. So you don't recommend the Builder Bears? Not so. There's a few exceptions. Look okay. them up. Don't ever just buy them. Okay. And I'm bad for just buying. <laughs> Me too. All right. So soft dream dreams. Terry Pink Bear. I never even heard of soft dreams. Soft dreams is a is a good brand. Um, it, it's a, a baby toy, but I picked it more because if, if you find any way that's cloth, it's somebody wants it. Any toy I ever find that's made of cherry cloth is highly sought after and usually goes for bigger dollars. Well, I've never even heard that, but good to know. That is awesome. All right, little, uh, they call these plushies, or is that what they're called? Loveys. Loveys, there we go. Yeah, Loveys. Oh, there it is, right in the title. Go <laughs> to red. Hello, Jason. Yeah, Lee. crazy, <laughs> crazy parents who just have to have the replacement, the backup. Um, if, if I'm going to do an overnight package, it's usually, and I have, I've overnighted loveys to resorts in Florida because they've lost their, their child's lovey and they need it immediately. But loveys are, I, I have hundreds. Well, this uh, Monsters, Inc. Little Mikey is pretty awesome. Yeah. Anything that you can buy that in the Babylon mm -hmm. Blue doll, anytime you find them, they're a good thing to buy. I think I paid... A dollar for no, oh, I bought cute. him at the Goodwill bins in Colorado when my sister and I went out there. But, yeah, that, that is that is Angela's new clock. <laughs> Just wonder everyone's wondering what we're hearing here. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so this uh this sold for sixty four bucks, and then yeah, anything with uh Jim Henson on it, I would always look at. Always. I had never heard of Sid the Science Kid. We don't have TV at our house, and I don't have Littles anymore what? anyway. Get I out. had never heard of Sid the Science. I bought that for $2 at a yard sale, and I was shocked when I saw that they were selling for that high. That That's is. really impressive. There's no TV at your house. No. Good for you. Well, no, they, have, they have everything. They have Netflix and video <laughs> oh, okay, games yeah. and okay. everything. So I'm right. saying YouTube. So let's end on this awesomeness. So why don't you tell us the story about the Sasha doll? Uh, Ten years ago, about, I found one of these dolls at, at a th local thrift store for $2. And didn't know, they're not, not marked. Unless they have their little tag that's hanging off their arms, they're not marked anywhere. Um couldn't find anything about it. And back then, 10 years ago, you know, they didn't have the Facebook groups like they do now that would help you ID. And I didn't even think to check. And I was listing her one morning and I was going to auction her. And at the last second, I thought 50 bucks, I'll be happy with 50 bucks. And I threw her up there and she sold in about one minute. And I eBay, I emailed the, the lady through eBay and I said, just I'm going to follow through with this sale, but could you just tell me who she is? And that's when she told me about the Sasha doll. And uh, when I looked it up, she was probably anywhere for, from 500 to 1,000. And th that one was in actually really good shape with her original clothes and shoes and everything. But I swore I would never forget her face. And then two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was, we have a local estate company that we go to every weekend, my sisters and I, and um, they put, put pictures out on Tuesdays. And um, I was looking through the pictures and there she sat on the dresser. And I knew instantly what she was. And they do, they start the estate sales on Thursday afternoon. And my son had a doctor's appointment. And I couldn't go. So I convinced my husband to go 
drive the 45 minutes. Hey, go for it. Stand in God. line. He was number 75. While oh we're sitting God. in the doctor's office, I'm texting him, are you in yet? Are you in yet? And <laughs> he got in and he got the doll and he sends me a text with her, her in his hand. And uh, I put her up that night on a, uh, she has some damage. I think a cat has chewed her feet. Oh um, my. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Yeah. It pretty much looked like a cat because they're very fine. And so I, you know, I put her up and I started her at 149. I thought I'd be happy at 149. And uh, she went for a whole lot more. 384. So you found your. um no, not the Holy Grail. It's when you, you know, uh, it's not the white elf. What the hell is it? Ah, I feel, you know, it sucks when you get old and you can't think of things. I know. <laughs> you know, you, you had it once and then you're like, eh. <laughs> I, I did that with a sheet once. I was talking about it earlier. And, oh, and yeah. Bridget was so mad at me. I had the Little Mermaid sheet when Little, uh, you know, the, the bedding sheet for a kid's bed when Little Mermaid had legs in the Kiss the Girl segment. And that's impossible to find. I sold for a quick 35, think I'm doing good. And Bridges like that sheet's worth a hundred dollars. Yeah. So I have been looking for that sheet every day for over a year now because I got to make up for my uh oh. So yeah, you have you have uh you have inspired me on on so many different levels. Uh so I want to thank you, uh, Rebel, for that. Uh, you know, the just the little things you said, like I get up before everyone else and I get my listings done. Like you get it done, and someone said. That's military training right there. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. I like my quiet time and my coffee. I have one question about when you listed that first doll, how did the buyer find it? Did I you, if you know. didn't know she was the Sasha, probably I like Jason know. and just searches every new Tiki mug listed in the last 12 hours. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> probably. In one I was minute, curious. Though, though, I know it would have just been, you know, and she was a redhead like this. So. It would have just been a redheaded doll, you know, 16 inches vintage. That's you know, you just, tell. well, yeah. I can tell you, I'm never for, going to forget what she looks like either. That's hey. like, a, that. that's a nightmare doll right there. And I saw some creepy yeah. dolls and that one scares me a little. Yep. It, it's like she got, uh, like she's had a bad hair di day where it's like her and hair bad Botox. and stuff. Like she's Botoxed and she kind of looks like a potato. So, uh, yeah. or my uh, someone missed it. How much did you pay for this at the estate sale? Eight dollars. Eight dollars. <laughs> and who made Sasha? Was it a company or was the company Sasha? The I think her name's like Sasha. I want to say Sasha Morgenstern or something like that. But she was working for another company and then decided to, they, she's from the '60s. She decided to do her own dolls, and these were them. Amazing. Well, I want to say uh, thank you for being on. I want to say thank you for being for your service, for being a teacher, and uh, I want to say so happy to hear that Lance is up and working. Yes, that, and driving. And Amen. Driving. How about that? And, and what did you say? What he's doing? What's he doing at the temp agency? He, he's actually working. He he wanted to work in this factory. Don't ask me why, but <laughs> he just thought it sounded cool. So he's working in a tire factory, building tires. And and loving it. Just oh loving well, it. He, I guess he was right. That, I mean, for it, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, so tell Lance we all said a, a giant hello from the thrifty, door, thrifty business for sure. And mm -hmm. uh, oh, I didn't say her store name out loud. Someone was asking, but I uh, here's the picture. Let me make it really big. And there it is, Gizmorph. The, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> Gizmo was my dog. Oh, my initials used to be RF. They're not oh, RF know. anymore. Okay. So it was Gizmo RF. But then the, uh, the other name of my store is New to You Toys. Okay. All right. So that's that. Yeah. That's your seller ID. And then. Yeah. Yeah. My 20,000. Look at that feedback. Mm -hmm. Holy wow. 100%. 20,866. So. Make sure if you're, even if you're never sold plush, make sure you go follow her. So look, check out what she's doing. And uh, Rebel's always around the thrifting board too. Plus she loves, you know, we love when she shares her stories like like the Sasha doll. 
Because that was like, she's like, I just had to share it before the show. It was so awesome. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. It was so much fun to watch. <laughs> I've been saving a few more stories. I'm going to post some stuff. All right, cool. I've oh, please. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in live tonight. For those of you who watch after the fact, thank you for tuning in. Whether you're watching live or after the fact, please give us a thumbs up. Give Rebel a thumbs up. Give Lance a thumbs up. Give uh, Angela a thumbs up. Give Stacy a thumbs up. Give Atocha a thumbs up. Give a bunch of thumbs up. Uh, and uh, next week, I said we'll be back with my producer from Thrift Hunters. So if you want to hear some embarrassing stories of me messing up <laughs> next week, and Mom and I are definitely doing a show on Sunday. We don't have a topic yet, but she's having her meetup this week. And there are 37 people coming to her house tomorrow. And it'll be the one day it hasn't rained in like seven months. <laughs> so it we has want rained. to hear the details of the awesome meetup with all the people at her in her backyard. So it should be a uh, fun show on Sunday. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rebel. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, thank you Rebel. You did great. Thank you. And have a good evening, everybody. Bye. Good night. <laughs>